Hi, my name is Christine Hardy, and I am inviting you to join me on a journey of self-exploration. So it's going to require a little bit of work on your part. Um, I do a healing modality called Life Alignment. And this is a remote session, which is going to be working with many people who join into the energy of this session. Uh, it's done with the intention of bringing in the quality of being of rapture in your life. So rapture is a state of pure joy, happiness, bliss, um, maybe even bringing in a kind of a spiritual connection for you. So whatever that means for you, um, we are going to be exploring what's been blocking that. So in life alignment, we look at words that lead us into a story that create the blockage in the first place. So you may well ask, well, you know, how would that pertain to me personally and how can I benefit from joining in this healing session? Well, my answer to that is that we are all interconnected and because this balance has already actually been done, the energy of it has already been put out there. As soon as you connect in with the balance, I'm leading you back into that energy um, and giving you an opportunity to connect to what the words would mean for you personally and how your personal story has created a bookmark for you. And this is where the body and the mind comes into it. So I'm gonna be taking you on a journey to go into introspection, to connect into the feeling. The deeper the feeling, the deeper the healing. So I would like you, if possible, to also have a notebook ready so that you can take down some notes, which would then mean that you wouldn't have to go back to this recording and do it all over again. But of course, you would be most welcome to do that um, during the three days that this is going live. If you wanted to reconnect to the balance and the recording and you need more time for the introspection. But anyway, get pen and paper ready and be prepared to join me for this self-exploration, um, which hopefully will lead you to some deeper insights, and give you an idea of how one can do this work with a little bit of support. It's not always easy to go into understanding what our deep-seated beliefs are because they create patterns in our life, for example. But we can only do that by going on a journey inwards. So get yourself ready and um, just write down these words. Okay, so rapture is what we're wanting to manifest into our lives. We've all felt it, we've all experienced it at some stage, but maybe we haven't experienced it for a long time and we wanna bring that feeling back into the body more often. Okay, so we're gonna have our ups and downs in life, we can't feel it all the time, but when we have that experience of um, complete bliss, it's as absolutely wonderful. But what stops this? So the next word is a fear connected with failure. So this fear of failure, you can um, think about what that means for you when we go into this balance as well. I'm going to give you ideas of what it could mean, but they're just only simply my impressions and my ideas. You just need to go into what that could possibly mean for you and create your own story. Uh, then the next word is work. So write that down. Then we had hunger, nothing, and of course there's always a fear holding us back and this is a fear connected with men. So if you are a man, don't think that this is only for women, it's not. Um, it's really more about the beliefs that we carry um, around the fear connected with men. So if you are a man, you might be, I'd like to even consider what that might mean in the way that you are projecting um, a fear into your environment with women. So this, like I say, works for both men and women. So you can go into this as well. And I'm going to give you the word obedience when you think about this fear. So quite often I would like to suggest 
that you know for example in our marriage vows we um we say to love honor and obey i think they've taken the obey out now but certainly it was there in my time and maybe there is still a collective consciousness around uh, fear with what happens if i am not obedient to my husband for example but that is just purely an example um, you might, again, like I say, have your own ideas of what that would mean for you. And the area of life that this story would have impacted is fate. So once we've got the story and we understand the story, we'll see how that is impacting us in the way we view it. Do we leave things to just fate or do we take things into our power and we use that through going into our deeper understanding of ourselves and turn that around okay so i'm gonna just ask you now you've got those words to close your eyes for a moment okay it's important to close your eyes because if you don't close your eyes you're not connecting to your body it's not easy to connect to your body unless you concentrate on connecting with your body. Now, the importance of this is what we say in life alignment is that the issue being the story is in the body's tissue. So it's stored in the cell's memories. And what happens is we have a trigger according to those stories. So it could be something that's happened in the past and then that has a trigger for what is happening today in your life. So remember also that our life stories create our beliefs. Our family history also create our beliefs. And our experiences, especially if they're not such good ones, can distort our beliefs and distort our perceptions. So we carry that forward in our life according to what our expectations are. And then our fears get triggered through those experiences sometimes as well. And then that holds us back. So we're going to go on our own journey of experiencing what this story could mean for you. So close your eyes. And first of all, we're going to bring into the body's awareness the feeling of rapture, which means that experience of joy and happiness and expansiveness, just the complete lightness of being. So if you're not feeling that right now, I want you to access a memory of a time where you were so ecstatically happy and bring the sense of that joy back into your body just for the moment so that you can experience what it feels like. So if you're feeling a little bit tense at the moment, maybe just relax a little bit. This isn't going to be a meditation, it's just a brief experience to take you to connect with your body. But just take a nice deep breath in and just let out any tension with the out breath. And again, a nice deep breath in and out. And as you're relaxing, you're allowing a memory or maybe numerous memories of some wonderful ecstatic moments that you've had in the past. As you access that memory, perhaps notice how light your body feels. You're not thinking about anything else that's happened in the past. You're not worried about anything that's about to happen in the future because you're just so in the moment with this beautiful experience and you don't really want it to leave you. Because it's such a beautiful place to be when you're in that space of pure rapture. Okay, so now you've accessed that feeling and you know how it's making your body feel, you can open your eyes. 
Now I'm going to take you to another experience, not such a nice experience, but you know, that's life. <laughs> it has its ups and downs. So when you think about a time where you've maybe thought you've failed at something, there's really no such thing as failure. It's how we judge ourselves. But we either have a fear about failure because it's something that we are wanting to achieve or do, and maybe we don't do it because we're afraid we're going to fail. Or maybe you've had an experience in the past where you have decided that you have failed at something and you are afraid to try again. So why I say that is because when you sense fear and you hold back and you go into freeze mode, the likelihood is you're not going to do anything about it. And you're only going to be living with, I wish I had at least tried at some point in your life. If you have tried and failed, you haven't actually failed. You're just going to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and try again. But the point is that this feeling of fear when we bring it into our body is what stops us from moving forward. So I want you again to please close your eyes, take a nice deep breath in, and let it out. And again, a nice deep breath in, and let it out. And again. Nice deep breath in and let it out. And I want you to allow yourself to experience that fear for a moment. I promise I won't keep you here for too long. So maybe you would like to access a memory from the past, or maybe there might be something that you're wanting to do and you haven't done it because you are fearful of failure, for example. Maybe you don't even set goals and aspirations for yourself because you're afraid of failure. Perhaps you had no support when you were a child. You didn't have any encouragement to do well. You didn't have any pats on the backs or congratulations or don't even congratulate yourself and acknowledge your own achievements. So allow yourself to feel fear of failure. And if you happen to be one of those very lucky people in your life where you haven't experienced fear yourself of failure, then maybe just imagine what it would be like to be maybe writing a very important exam, going for that job interview, whatever it may be. Just tap into what it may feel like. a completely different feeling to the one of rapture. You may feel that your body is starting to constrict. Maybe you even sense in a darkness looming over you. Maybe you feel your legs are heavy, not able to move forward. You're probably sitting down right now. You may feel yourself just weighted in your chair. You may feel the chest start to close in, and again, the muscles just generally tensing up. Okay, so I think that's long enough there. So open your eyes and just come back to where we are right now. And I want you to think about fear of failure now connected maybe with work, because the next word was work. Now, work may not be 
your job of work, it may be whatever it is you consider to be hard work, maybe joyless work, something that you find is an arduous task, an arduous task of sorts, and you see that as being work. Or maybe you have a job that you don't enjoy doing. It doesn't give you any sense of accomplishment. It doesn't give you any joy to wake up in the morning and go to work. Perhaps you have an environment that's not a happy environment. Maybe you have work, a work colleague or colleagues that you don't get along with. Maybe you have a boss that you don't look up to and respect and get on with. Whatever it may be, just link to what you think this fear of failure could be connected with work. What comes to mind for me is a story about a lady who came on one of my workshops. In fact, we did a interview with Shireen on one of my YouTube videos just recently. And she was a student of mine going back quite a number of years now. And when she came into the workshop, she was very nervous, very stressed, and she didn't feel confident at all in the fact that she was going to be learning something new. In fact, rather than being excited about it, she was really nervous about it. So we did a balance on her to find out what the story was. And it actually was a story connected with her work where she had to train somebody up for doing some work that she normally does. And that person ended up taking over her position, which took away her confidence completely. And that had carried through with her into the workshop. So you could explore what these possibilities are for you and take whatever amount of time you need and jot down what those things are. But when you jot them down, don't just jot down the first thing that comes to your mind. Give yourself time to explore what feels right for you in your heart. So you've got to get out of your head, into your heart, and just trust what is coming up for you, that you feel that this is what is connected, it's the right thing. If you were coming in for a session with me or having a one-on-one -on -one with me, I would be dowsing or muscle testing you to get a biofeedback response from your body to find out, is this the story? So you may have a couple of potentials in here of what it could be. What we also do is often look for a time frame associated to this story. So we could ask, is it current or is it in the past? Now, this is going to be a group balance, so I'm not going to limit it to something that is current or past. But quite often, our past is affecting what's happening to us currently. So that's why it's important to take a look at our belief systems and um, how we're responding to these words. So think about that. And then the next word is hunger. So when I thought of hunger, I wasn't thinking of hunger in as far as food and eating food. I was thinking more about how this story is unfolding, fear connected with failure, maybe the failures connected with work in some way. And then how would hunger come into this story? And I felt, well, Hunger and thirst are the same things in a way, but you've got to hunger for something. You've got a thirst for something that is going to be motivating you into action. And you're not motivated into action and the excitement of what that might bring and the joy that that might bring if you are stuck in your fear of failure. So in a way, it almost seemed to me that this word was counteracting the sense of failure. Because when you hunger for something, you normally have a sense of passion about something. And that is something that ignites your, your soul, ignites you inside and just is like a vehicle that pushes you forward in life. 
So maybe you would like to close your eyes for a moment and just reflect on what that might mean for you in the context of this story. And just jot down ideas. You can always come back to this later. Then the next word was nothing. So again, I'm looking to see how these words are unfolding into a story. And my feeling about this was that if I don't hunger for something, then it's almost like there's nothing. So imagine having nothing to aspire to. Imagine having nothing in your life that excites you. So in a sense, I felt this nothing was a motivation for me. And I'd like it to be, if possible, a motivation for you that you can think about, if I do nothing, I'm going back into failure and I'm escaping the possibility of rapture in my life. So look at it from different angles to see how it fits in with your story. And then maybe think about a fear connected with men. So if you are a man listening to this, maybe think about how you may be projecting this fear outwards. Being a female, I um, checked out what this fear was connected to, and it seemed to be connected to obedience in some sort. So as a child being brought up, my father was the one who did the punishing if I wasn't obedient. So it would be really scary for me if I did something wrong. And I knew that when my father came home, I would get a spanking. So maybe there was always a fear for me about obedience. I remember even at school, the headmaster putting me over his legs once <laughs> because I dropped ink accidentally over my book. So that's going back a long time when we used ink wells <laughs> and fountain pens and it splodged all over my work and I got sent to the headmaster for a spanking. So again, I wasn't being obedient. In our marriage vows today, or maybe not today, maybe in my time, maybe it's changed now, I think it has, you marry to love, honour and obey. So this was a very big one for me, connected to this fear. And when we say a fear, it's not like a fear that can literally grip you, but it's still an underlying subconscious fear. So when we're going into subconscious stuff, it's not always there blatant for us. We need to, again, introspect to see where does this come from? Because as an adult, you don't necessarily, on a conscious level, think about it. But when you go deeper and you think, well, how, for example, was I brought up as a child? What did I believe about obedience and and this fear connected with men because of my own personal experiences. So there you go. There are my experiences. What are your experiences? What was your belief system based on from your childhood, perhaps? So just jot down a few things there as well. And then the area of life here connected with this story is fate. So if you take your whole story in the context of what your story is, and then ask yourself the question, has my fear, for example, and what's going on in my life, stop me from taking back my power and allowing me to move forward, making choices in my life? Believing in myself, trusting in myself, trusting my heart, trusting that I can do this. 
trusting that I am adequate. I'm adequate in everything that I do. I don't need to fear failure. So do you tend to leave things to fate or do you take charge of your life and make new choices? Do you have the courage to take the responsibility And I think this is now where the first ray comes in because the connection here with the body point is the first ray. Now, we call them body points because they are, obviously the first ray is more on a spiritual level. So it's not like we are working here with a body point that you understand perhaps if you want to know more about the opening up of the seven rays on a more spiritual level you can um, google the seven rays and learn a little bit more about them but the first ray is about our will and power so if we're wanting to bring in the energy through our will and power and allow that to flow, it would mean we shouldn't really be allowing ourselves to give away our power. So in the balance, I have opened up this pathway for us to receive that through the first ray. So just close your eyes again for a moment. And whatever your story may be, I want you to just place your hand over your heart area and connect with your heart and just ask for guidance to connect to your true self. Connect into your true self so that you can project outward your truest potential for greatness. Whatever that greatness may mean for you, and it's not comparing yourself with someone else, it's just allowing you to choose what you want for your life that makes you feel good, that makes you feel like you are taking your power back and not relinquishing it to your life story of your past or your fears of your future. So just take a nice deep breath in and with that deep breath in, just imagine this opening of this pathway coming in like a shining bright light into your very being. Imagine it coming in through your head and just filling you with pure light. And just feel your heart expanding and filling with joy. especially as you acknowledge and trust that I am adequate. Every time you sense or feel failure, I want you to use this positive, positive affirmation. I am adequate. I am adequate. And as your whole body fills with this liquid of pure light,
allow it to dissolve past fears, present fears, future fears. And just connect with your true self. Open up to all potential, all possibilities. And loving yourself enough to know that you deserve this rapture and happiness and bliss in your life. I receive bliss. I receive joy. I receive happiness. I choose to no longer give away my power. And if I do feel the fear, I'll do it anyway. So thank you so much for joining me on this little journey of introspection. And I hope it's allowed you a chance to understand how important it is to connect with your body. Don't sweep those emotions and those feelings under the carpet as if they don't exist because they become very real, tangible things in your life. And the sooner you start working on those things that hold you back in life and peel back the layers. This is just probably one layer. There'll be many, many more layers to peel back. The more you peel back the layers, the less you're going to be holding on to the emotions that hold you back, the emotions that send triggers rippling through your body that tense you up and stop you from being your true self. So if this is just the start of your journey, or maybe you've done this type of work before, and this has really connected you to something, then I'm really grateful for this platform to bring you here on the experience of a life alignment journey with Christine Hardy. Thank you.